Today is an auspicious day. We're sticking a flappy thing on the floaty thing. Today's job is to clean out this rudder post. So this is uh, what we're working with here. It's basically full of grease and grubby and disgusting and it's covered in dirt and it's pretty horrid. So the plan is we have to get in there and clean all of that out. And that's, a, that's basically a tube that goes from where you can see it here right up through the boat and comes out just below deck level. So the plan is to basically put all of this together. So we've got our new rudder shaft in this red package here. We've got a nut that screws on top of the shaft, top bearing, wear plate, We've got our bottom bearing, or bottom for the rudder post, it's actually the middle bearing on the whole assembly. And then we've got a what's probably called a pintle bearing right at the bottom. I've got no idea what the word is, but it doesn't really matter. My boat isn't going to stop working because I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I need to put this stainless flange onto that shaft. So um, I can only do this when everything's assembled because where this gets welded on is very specific because you've got that, that bolt pattern on top there. If I get it wrong, the rudder's always going to be off to one, one side and I'll be able to turn further one side than the other. So I have to get it spot on so that the rudder turn is actually even. One of the other things I want to do is replace all of the grease lines. So this white line here is one of the standard grease lines and it basically plugs onto the stern gland at the front, the back and the rudder post. There's three separate lines and they're just a standard sort of grease nipple at the end. I'm going to replace them all with new pipe. Um, I don't know what sort of condition these are in, they might be fine, um, but I don't really want to spend all of this time effort rebuilding everything for only for it to die because I didn't bother replacing these. So this will be a job that we'll do and we'll probably never have to do for another 10-15 years. So funny story, it's having a real hissy fit every time I try and put it onto the either the deck or the cabin roof or something like that. There's too much magnetic interference. So the only place it seems to be able to not freak out is sticking it up on the radar mast. <laughs> I think it worked. I just think it's freaking out because it's got no blades on it and it doesn't know what's happening and every time it does something it doesn't seem to move or make any difference. It um, flipped up to max engine RPM so I backed that right off so it's obviously having a bit of a freak out but it looks like it's actually working so I think it's time to throw some propellers on this thing and see if it actually flies. What are you doing? Leaving Fluffy. So what I gotta get into, this is obviously the top of the rudder stock. So there's a big wear surface up the top here. Um, it's basically a flat steel disc that's welded onto the top of the tube. That's what our uh, sacrificial flat wear pad bearing sits on. And it's a greased surface top and bottom. So that basically takes the full weight of the rudder. So the rudder literally hangs off the top of this post. So I need to clean this up. Um, I'll probably get in there and buff it up just so I don't want to take any material off I just want to take any sort of crud and crap and things like that It doesn't matter if there's like little dimples from rust and things like that because I'll always be a low spot So that's just going to fill up with grease. It's not going to make it's not going to affect it in any way What I need to do is obviously clean that up and then I've got to clean all of the old grease out of the uh, tube So my plan for that is actually just to ball up a rag and then punch it through so I'm going to make it as tight as I possibly can um, and then probably get a big piece of pipe or something and just belt it through, get as much as I can out, and then I think I might even get in there with a water blaster and just, you know, get the last of it out. I don't, I don't know, I mean, there might be nothing wrong with this grease, but it's been sitting like that for a long time. There's definitely gonna be dust and crud and all that sort of stuff in there, and that's certainly not gonna look after the new bearings, so we'll clean it out, we'll get the new bearings in, get the shaft in, we can do all of our dry fitting and measurements and everything. 
We'll put our grease lines in and then once we're ready to assemble, we'll fill it all up with new grease. Right. Let's get in there and give it a clean. So you can sort of see there's like little pit marks and things all the way around. None of that really matters because that's just going to be filled up with grease. But what I wanted to make sure is just that there's no like loose rust or any rubbish that's sitting on there because that's, if there is it's just going to basically wear out and go into the shaft. So the more I can clean it now the better. But I'm pretty happy with that. That's clean enough to be covered up with grease and sealed up. Yeah so today there's a day of um, helicopters landing around the boat, flying and doing tourist rides and stuff like that. And the reason all of this is happening is because the locals heard that we're getting quite close to launch, so they put on a bit of a do for us. All right, that's a complete lie. And in their natural habitat, the local inhabitants abandon all sense of personal space and food hygiene. They frolic with abandon at an annual festival. Right, hey. Let's have a shot at the title. So I've got a rag balled up, just got a piece of old aluminium pipe. Uh, just turn it off, you don't have to unplug it, just turn it off. Should we go that way? Right, so I've got a rag in there, ball up. Just an old piece of aluminium pipe. Oh. Alright. Not as tight as I thought. I think we're going to do that again. I don't think we got anywhere near enough out that time. That's looking directly down the shaft. You can sort of see there's like swirls of grease and stuff right down the very bottom. So we obviously need to go more rag, I think. Last time I had two rags, now I've got three rags. I'm hoping it's going to be stupid tight. Which, yeah, that's about right. Wicked. Give that a go. Yeah, that's about the correct setting. Okay, more power. It's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better. So same trick. You can see right down there. It's not perfect, certainly, but it's cleaned out a lot of the old grease. So I think we're probably not going to get much more out with the rags. I think it's probably time to get in there with a water blaster. Just start peeling it off with that. Putting in some, um, <laughs> everyone's yelling. Helicopters, dogs, the lot. See ya. Yeah. All right, so it's time to start putting some bearings in. So we've got that uh, stock cleaned out. Um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. So we'll start putting these bearings in and then we'll pump some new grease through our new lines when we install those. And then we'll flush it out that tube. We'll get this. Uh, rudder shaft up in place we can start bolting some pieces together. So step one is basically get all of the bearings assembled into the uh, rudder stock and then we're going to go and get the yoke which is the big piece of steel that sits at the top the hydraulic rams bolt to. We'll get that bolted up to the shaft, slide the shaft down between all of the bearings and everything and that um, will then allow us to start figuring out where we've got to put this plate so we'll be tack welding this um, big stainless flange here onto our um, new shaft. Uh, and then from there on it's a pretty straightforward process of um, just, yeah, we, we pull the shaft and everything back out because I have to take that into town and get it welded with a, a really big welder 
um, but then I can start fitting all of the um, the new grease lines. We're pretty much ready to go for a rudder alignment soon after that. And as far as the rudder is concerned, you've got a blast and paint, right? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. This like one. at the end, pretty much. Yeah. So my plan, I do need to basically sandblast the rudder and then give it a good paint. So I think I'll probably might even just ask Tony to do it because something he'll just blast the whole thing and throw some primer on it. Do it that way. Getting lazy in your old age. Yeah. Jolly good. Okay, I've pressed that one in. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an interference fit. Thank you, John. Fit. No, that's an interference fit. I'm just fucking strong. It only takes 25 pounds. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go and get this shaft out. So this is the nut that basically holds everything together. So this is a essentially a custom nut. So you can sort of see a blooming great big nut onto a steel flange and then you can see there's welds on all six sides and then you've got a locking pin here that cracks it all down and means that it can't move. And that, oh beautiful. Oh Thread, look at that. Threads on really lovely. And then we've got a key stock here. So this so there's a taper that means it all jams up really tight and won't move and then you've got a key stock here that absolutely means that it can't go anywhere like the the yoke can't turn on the shaft and then on top of all of that you've got the square stock here um, which john's machined up for us and that's where our um, emergency tiller goes so if all the hydraulics break if everything's failed we can essentially turn this into a tiller steered boat so it's going to be a big tiller it'll probably be like you know eight nine feet long something like that um, but it does mean that we can limp brew peak home should all of the hydraulics fail really close you can see there it must be an abs like a couple of thou different just a or something. tiny little burr or something yeah. so we've just gone through and filed up actually we filed this end up so we cleaned up all of the like you can sort of see there's shiny spots on there we've taken all of the low spots there wasn't much on there because it's new bar stock but also gone through and given this a bit of a file but there's obviously something just a little burr or something that's you can actually it. see it's a little bit raised here yeah yeah I think it just so needs we'll a little bit of a sandy. Yeah, we'll go through and do a bit of a clean up on that and then get that to fit in properly. It's pretty close. Eighty six millimeters down is a is a lip. So this basically gets cut from you measure from that surface there down to where my scratch mark is is eighty six millimeters. And that there's eighty six millimeters. So the bearing oh, I know what he did. What? He did it on purpose. Why? He said, why don't we machine two bearings and keep one as spare? I didn't realise he didn't ah. cut them in half. This is twice as long as it needs to be. But so don't you need the lip on the second one? I could get away without it. Oh, if I you? had to, I could get away without really? it. Really? Yeah. D doesn't it drop down though? Couldn't it move? Shimmy down over a year or so, vibration. Actually, no, you're right, I do need that lip. Yeah. But I could always cut the lip off and still just replace that part if I absolutely had to. If I was stuck in the middle of nowhere, yeah, right. I could I could do that. Good to have a backup, eh? Hey? Yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah, I remember now. A conversation No from one's caring about a lift if we're in the middle of nowhere no. stuck without a rudder working. A conversation a year ago, now I remember what it was about. <laughs> yeah. Know. Right, now that we got that cut to length, just want to go around and deburr it. Just with my little deburring tool, makes a really beautiful job. Takes out all the slag. There's a wee bit of slag left over from cutting it, which burnt it a little bit, which is not a big deal. Right, a nice chamfer in there. Chop a little chamfer in that one there. You can see just a little bit of pressure, and it basically brings a nice. You can see that. It's what you're sort of left with. If you do it right. 
All right, we're ready to go. So the plan is now we'll press this in the top and then we'll work out how much we're gonna take off the top and we'll flatten that off as well. Easier like that. Okay, that's done. Now, the wear plate. What I'll do actually, I'll just show you what's going on. So. This wear plate allows grease to basically travel up and squirt out. Um, when the shaft is sitting in here, grease can travel up beside it and squirt out either side of it. And you've got these little paths here that grease can come down into, and there's a machined groove that sort of does an eccentric. It goes out sort of over to this level and then back in, out here and then back in there. And then on the underside, you've got exactly the same. And you've got holes so that grease can transfer from one side to the other. And what that allows is this whole face on both sides gets covered in grease. Doesn't matter which way up it goes. And that there theoretically can rotate. It's covered in grease and it can rotate anywhere around. The yoke sits on top of that and the rams here bolt either side of the yoke. And that's what actually takes the full weight of the rudder. And it's what also provides the steering uh, for Brewpig with these rams here. I need to machine the top of this bearing. And as a lot of you know, I don't have a lathe in Brewpig. Um, so we figure out ways around that. There's a really easy way that I'm going to show you that is a good way to machine two surfaces level if you ever need to do that whether it's plastic in this case or aluminium, wood, anything like that. I don't know, you could probably do it with steel but you'd have to maybe reuse like some better tools, something like that but this is a great way if you want to do something with light materials. The bit itself looks like that. It's basically just a flat cutting bit, a plunge bit. But a little bit bigger. Slightly bigger, that's all. Have you, have you explained how you're doing this routing? It's very cool. Very, very cool. So these two surfaces need to be, the yellow surface and that sort of darker surface of that original wear plate need to be um, basically the same level. So at the moment you can sort of see that yellow one's raised up quite a bit, maybe five mil, something like that. So I need a, I actually want to drop it down slightly below the original level of that wear plate. Um, the reason being is then grease can easily flow up and go out into those grease ports on that top plate. So I'll show you a trick to make sure that these get the right level. You're helping me, don't you? So I made this little tool up here. You get distracted by the mesh. <laughs> Probably should stay focused. Yeah. So I made this little tool up and it's basically just a piece of pine. I think it's 19 mil thick, something like that. But I've cut a circle that's bigger than the wear plate, uh, sorry, bigger than that new bearing. So you can sort of see there's a bit of slop there. And what that allows me to do is set the depth on the router, set the depth to exactly whatever I want. In this case, the thickness of that is exactly the depth that I want to have it hanging out of the bottom of this router. And then by doing that, I know that I'm going to get it exactly level with that surface. And you're doing that because you want the, um, the grease to come out. Yeah. Don't you? So, so this here is, I'm pretty sure this is 19 millimeters. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, 19 mil. So I'm actually going to set the plunge depth on this to 20 millimeters because I want this to be slightly lower than the original um, wear plate here. And that allows basically a free flow of grease to come up and over this top surface and then out onto this wear plate. And thank you to Trevor who dropped this in for oh, us to use. This tool here, yeah, yeah, this was. So you might have seen last week I destroyed my router. Um, Trevor saw that episode and then came waltzing over with a blimmin' awesome Ryobi router. So, yeah. thank you, Trev. It's awesome. Right, let's see if I can set this thing. If you're wondering what that little green tub is behind Damien, that's Mishka's deck toilet spot. <laughs> Extreme closer. Some focus. 
All right, that's at 20. That's good. So I've got this sitting out, basically the, the, far, the top edge here of each of these cutting blades is sitting 20 mil out from the surface here. So each of these tips is 20 millimeters off the surface of here, and this wood is 19 millimeters. So if you put that there, you can just, it's a wee bit hard to see on the camera probably. All right, so it's pretty simple. Now we just need to put this wood onto our bearing, and we can go through and just basically buzz this out. So exactly. you're gonna have to wash out the um, shaft. That's okay, I'll push a rag through. Wow. So see how it's cutting ever so slightly into that? Yeah. It means I've got it set exactly where it needs to be. Is that what you want, eh? Yeah, it's exactly what I want. Mm. So just get rid of the chips. Hey. Yeah, a little bit to go. That a quick clean up. Lovely. That is pretty awesomely good enough. Okay, so this is my setup. I basically got a bucket with a piece of, uh, I think it was five inch exhaust pipe just plumbed up, it fits pretty nicely on that original that is looking pretty good let's see if I can get you a better shot so remembering last time it's a bit hard to see in this light but we had a stack of chips and gross bits and all that sort of carry on but now it's um, apart from a few beads of water it's pretty clean up there Okay, now that we've got that done, I'll throw that bottom bearing in. Alright, we should be just about ready to start assembling this shaft. I've been wandering around for about 10 minutes trying to find this yoke. Um, it's a part that I took off the boat maybe a year ago, something like that. The thing is, it's not a small piece and I can't find it anywhere. It's a massive big stonking great lump of steel. Anyway, time for a coffee because the swearing to work ratio is getting stupid at the second. So I'm um, making coffee, Jess is in there talking to her family. Well I can't find this yoke, I've been working on something that I can do. So I've got this key material here that we need to work uh, to the right shape and size and everything to fit in. So they come stock standard, they come just as basically a square box section, it's solid steel. Um, I'm assuming it's hardened steel, I don't really know, but it's basically there just to stop the yoke from being able to twist in any way on that taper on the shaft. So what we've got, we start off like this, just with a square piece of, um, in this case, 5.8 um, key stock. And then I've gone through and I've just given it a really fine polish just to make sure that there's no burrs, I've filed off any high spots. This one was actually a little bit tight in the keyway, so I've just um, essentially just relieved it a fraction, like, I don't know, probably taken next to nothing off it, but it was just enough to get it to slide down. I've also rounded the end, you can see that. We've just curved that over, and I just did that actually on the, on the bench grinder down here, um, so just, vertically just going like this and rounding it off back and forth like so and then I'll probably go through and linish this as well just to make sure it's really beautiful and lovely when we're finished. So the key stock goes in this slot here and I've basically just gone through with a really fine tooth file and cleaned up made sure there's no burrs. There was next to nothing on, it's a brand new shaft so you wouldn't expect too much but it's mainly just this was transported from the other end of the country so it's just making sure that there's no nicks and bumps from transport. Um, this key stock should now fit in there fairly nicely like so so I just need to go through now and actually cut it to length so we'll put a mark in it and then we'll cut that off with a cutoff disc and just clean up the back corners so now we've got that now we've got that cut off we can just go through and clean up these edges <laughs> see you guys later eh <laughs> see you Yep, we're home. Cool. So there's my keyway done. We found the yoke. 
Uh, we forgot that I'd took it into town about three months ago to get some work done on it, and I've um, forgotten to pick it up. So, yeah. so I'll go in tomorrow morning, I'll grab that, and then we're good to go with our rudder shaft to put that back in. Malcolm came over and gave us a really neat way of um, aligning the whole thing. We were going to do it with a laser, um, but he came up with an even simpler idea, so we'll grab some... Uh, some parts in town tomorrow and we'll give that a shot. Um, I won't tell you about it now I'll show you what we're going to do shortly However this morning I will put in the grease line So I'm about to start building a little stainless mount to hold our grease nipples so that we can grease uh, Both ends of the propeller shaft and the rudder from one location So it's very easy to um, make sure the all of the running parts of the the drivetrain and everything are greased um, From one location down to go climbing around the engine bay. So these are the original grease lines um, this end here bolts to um, either the rudder or the propeller shaft depending on what, it, what one it is and this end here is your standard sort of grease nipple what I need to do is where this this has got a bronze um, hex arrangement here I need to actually replace it with one of these so this is a weldable fitting so it's got the same internal thread and all that sort of jazz but what I want to do I've got some stainless here I'm going to cut out a little sort of mount and everything and mount the three um, three hex I've got three of these things I'm going to put like so, weld them in, and that way we can have a grease nipple on top, and then on the underside we can have our new piping basically head away and go off to wherever it needs to go. So I'll get started into this mount and we'll start welding these together. All right, now that we've got our plate done, just roughly set these out. So go something like that. And that gives me enough room to get the gun either side and do a weld all the way around. All right, so let's give them a measure up and then we'll blast three holes. I reckon they're about half inch, something like that. What have we got? Oh, 14 mil, okay, not half inch. All right, so I'll throw a 14 mil hole in there and we'll weld these on. When you see what I'm replacing, you'll understand how this is about a 47,000 time improvement on what's there currently. So now that we've got that cut and drilled, I'm going to go and put these three little fittings into our holes that we've just made, we'll weld them in, and then we can start assembling this into the engine room. This is our plate. That's going to be the top surface of it. You can see where the three grease nipples will be welded on the bottom, and then that's what you're left with. These are our components. So we've got right our pipe, our this fitting here. I think that's don't know what that's called. I think it's an olive. I don't know what that's called. Doesn't matter either. And that's our nipple. So these are all these are new. And these are second hand. We're going to replace these because they're shagged. I just ran a tap down there and you can see it's just really manky and gross but for the purpose of this exercise it's going to be enough so what we need to do this pipe we need to put a flare on but before we do that you slide that up and then you flare that this is obviously just a piece of pipe I cut off to show you but you flare this end out and then this here can't go any further once that flares on there so this fitting here you can sort of see at the end here you've got a little bit of an angle depending on what fittings you're using I think it's 37.5 uh, degrees angle and then the flare goes out and meets that angle and this is a, a um, steel pipe with copper on the inside and outside so it's relatively soft so that basically stretches out and then the two clamp up together like that and it pushes the flare on here gets pushed against that angle there 
let's assume that's threaded in properly it's not but let's just assume it is that'll get screwed on there like that and then the grease nipple <laughs> and that'll fall out and the grease nipple will sit on top like that so when we're finished all you're actually going to see is three grease nipples in a row quite neat on a piece of stainless okay so brew pegs engine bay it's a bit of a mess but this this is where so our original grease lines were right here and you can see they're kind of there was one randomly stuffed like bolted here there was another one sort of jammed up in behind there and then finally the third one sits right up the back in an awkward position and it's nicely painted over right there on the rudder stock so all of those are garbage we're going to replace those i'll show you some tools that i found these i used these a long time ago on some uh, copper pipes for an AC system and uh, it's a, it's basically able to bend the stuff that I'm using today and it means that I'm going to be able to get a really beautiful finish so I'll show you what I've got. So this little set here this is this is a bender basically allows you to do a radius bend on pipes three different thicknesses and then I've got this set here this whole lot cost me about 25 bucks on eBay so we've got a pipe cutter and then the flaring tool here. So you clamp the pipe in this one and then you push the flare down with this one here. Now this isn't the same uh, flare, di um, flare angle that I'm using on some of these fittings, but because it's a really soft pipe, the fittings themselves are actually gonna be able to push it out and, and meet any differences in angle. Um, it's not ideal, but it's the tools that I've got and it'll work. So what those tools allow me to do is to obviously do all my own flaring and so on, but with that bender, means that I can get really beautiful, um, absolutely perfect bends every time. It'll be exactly the same radius because it's going through the same tool. So what I'm thinking of, I've got three pipes that need to go in different directions, but I'm able to get, you know what it's like when you see pipes absolutely perfectly, you know, right angles with a lovely radius in and then another one right below it and all that sort of stuff. That's what I'm hoping to do, get absolutely schmick piping like that. So you look at it, you walk in the engine bay and you see it and you're like, that's that's awesome. That's my goal. Before we get too carried away, this is the original. So you can sort of see it's basically jammed down in the bilge. It's right down in the bottom drain hole there. It kind of follows all the way through and then randomly follows itself along. It's just an ugly, ugly setup. So um, yeah, that was never gonna last. So I've got to start basically running where all the, all the piping and everything's going to go. So I've got the one that goes. The shortest one is the back end of the stern, uh, back end of the stern tube. So this is a completely grease filled tube, bearing at the back, stern gland at the front, um, and there's two uh, grease ports in this tube. So I'll start with the one that's just on the other side over here. It's the easiest to, to start working on. Um, once I've got that laid out, then I'll probably start doing the other two. I'm thinking of even relocating the one that's up in the rudder stock because I just don't really think I, I don't like the way that they've done it I just I could be wrong but I just don't necessarily think that it's going to be a really good solution long term so I'll show you what I mean when I get to that okay bend that out the way all right so we want, I want to take this fitting off and reuse it so Pipe cutter, it's basically a cutting disc and then two rollers with a slot in it. And as you spin it around and around, you'll see in a second, you crank this down and it forces that roller into the cutting disc, or forces the cutting disc, sorry, into the rollers. So it's on there now. And you just spin it around and around and around. And then as you go a couple of times around, crank it back up a bit more, and just keep going. And what that gives you, is that absolutely perfectly square, beautiful cut. I might actually run everything on this side here and that's gonna keep it a bit neater, I think. I'm also gonna be taking it away from the bilge. I don't want anything in the drains. I want them to be free flowing. So I'm gonna be running it up the top here and then curving it down. So I will start making up this pipe here. We'll bring it up and we'll bring it to this fitting, which is gonna be mounted further down this way here. How do you flare a piece of pipe? So you get this gadget here, and there's different, let me show you that. There's different sizes, so small pipe here, big pipe here, um, and then obviously two much larger pipes here. There's inside, I don't know if you can see that, but there's sort of like a, a uh, knurling put in there, or basically lots of grooves, and it essentially means that the pipe won't come loose when it's all clamped up. 
So what you want to do, you put the pipe in the appropriate size hole and then you want the surface of it to be pretty much level with the surface of the steel. So that's flush. So we'll crank that up nice and tight. Okay, like that. Then you get this gadget here. And it, it's got a cut there and a cut there on a diagonal. So what it allows you to do is put that in, in the pipe centered like that, twist it, so it's, you sort of see it's twisted off on an angle, and then you can tighten that up. And as soon as I get a bit of tension on it. It's pretty hard to do this with only two hands. Okay, so that's basically sitting in the uh, in the pipe, and you just want to gently squeeze that out. And if you don't have these here cranked up hard enough, you'll actually just end up pushing the pipe backwards. So you just want to—it's real soft this pipe, so you don't want to go berserk on it. If you go if you go mental, you'll just end up deforming it. We got enough of a flare. Probably not. So I'm just gonna open it up. I need to have it a bit tighter because it's obviously pushing it backwards. Alright, let's give that another shot. slid right off the back end of it but it's really important to always make sure you put this on first because if you flare it afterwards there's no way you're ever going to get it on so because of that flare this now physically can't come off this pipe So putting a curve into these things, you basically want to measure, so you've got, it's a bit hard to see in the light, you've got essentially a, um, the degrees of bend, so it starts at zero here, 45, 90, 135, 180, and if you measure from the zero down to this end peak here, that'll give you the straight section before the bend, and then obviously you've got the height between this here and the literally the 90 there that's that's how tight a radius it's going to do it so it's only going to be i don't know maybe from from the zero up it's probably only about an inch on this machine each bend is a different radius doesn't really matter it's it all does the same job but you crank that around until the zero lines up with the 90 which is bang on there and then you can undo the whole thing and you got a poor, perfectly formed bend so my plan is to go through and do that with all of them and end up, it's not quite 90 that one by the looks of it, but you can always go and add a bit more bend if you've not quite done enough. It's very hard to unbend it, it's very easy to add bend. Okay, so in this case, I might add a bit more. There we go, it's looking better. Yeah, that's pretty good, I'm happy with that. I'm actually gonna go over 90. A 
if I was racing to get this done and I just wanted to slap something together, all of this piping is able to be bent by hand, and that's clearly what they did with the old stuff. Um, but I've got the time, I'd rather take my time and do it, a nicer job of it. Alright, so we need a bend in there. Okay, and when you start bending, you want to make sure that you're lining up. If you bend off to a side or whatever, it's very hard to fix it after the fact. So you always want to make sure that you're lined up nice and square with any previous bends. So I will bend this out slightly just so that we've got clearance here, but what I might actually, actually what I might do is put a bracket to hold it there just so that it's not gonna flop around in mid-air. Probably doesn't need a bracket, but if we've got one, nothing harmful will happen. So let's put our fittings on and start flaring that up. Always put your olive on first. Right. And then find the parts that you put down, you can't remember where you put them. Remember our garbage fitting from earlier today? Well, we're using that to size everything up. We will be replacing those fittings, but for right now, they'll work absolutely perfect to make sure we put things in the right place. God almighty, they're crap. <laughs> they braised the fittings together for some reason. I've never seen that, but they braised the fittings together and it basically meant that it was impossible to reuse them, which we were planning to do. Anyways, so it can be a challenge trying to figure out where to put curves and all that sort of stuff with pipes. And it's one of those things that's insanely easy to get it wrong, quite hard to get it right. That should be ready to bolt up. Slide that in there. Slide that onto there. One hydraulic line. All right. So the reason why I wanted to get this one sorted first because that basically positions all of our gear. So now we can start running the line going to the back and the line going to the front. I was going to go up, back, across, and then through here, but I just had a thought about it. It's going to put it in the path of all of the drainage, so I'll come up and probably go across the top here because then it's clear of everything. Fraction is short, but I wouldn't want to go any lower than that. Okay, so I think that is our. That's going to be our piece. So we'll make this out of nice new pipe. I'll obviously make it long enough to fit all the way back, so I'll make it with a bit of excess probably half a meter of excess just in case I want to throw extra bends in somewhere um, and then yeah once we've got this first bit done I can figure out where we want to route it down towards the back end of the boat so 90 degrees So 
So what I'm doing, I'm using, say, this edge here as, as my surface of truth, and then wherever this pipe is, that's where I'm trying to finish at the top of the radius. So I'll spin the camera around and show you what I mean by that. So I've got, if I put my template on that, I've got that bend there basically done, and you can sort of see the pipes line up as close as I'm gonna get, I think. What I need to do is replicate this bend. Bang. I need to replicate this bend here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this. Trying to do this with no hands. So I put my pipe work on there like that. And you can sort of see the um, the bender needs to go down more towards the, the bend that I've just made. So at the moment it's going to bend it and that pipe work will be too long. So it needs to move probably a bit too much. It needs to go maybe there. That's a bit too much. Let's back off a fraction. Yeah, so you can see there it sits basically on top of the radius for the bend. So that will mean that that pipe work is about what we need. Cool. Now, we're going to be side on to that. And that's a 45. 90. By 45 I mean 90. Be our shape. Okay, so there is a wee bit of twist in this pipe that I need to put in. I think I'll put it in when it's sitting there because then I can get it spot on rather than do it here. Okay, and our final bend is down here. Dangles. We want a ninety. Okay. Should be able to feed that through now. Bang on, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll flare this in here, um, and that way I know that I'm always working with the same point of truth. Uh, right, flaring tools. So again, I don't want anything to be near the bilge. I want to bring everything up. I don't want the... So steel boats rust from the inside out. Um, they might look perfect from the outside. If you're ever looking to buy a steel boat, ignore the outside, pay attention to the inside. And the bits you want to pay attention to is in the bilges where stuff gets stuck. Um, so for example, if you've ever had welding swarf in there or if there's any grit and grime and all that sort of stuff and it gets stuck in the bilge, it'll, just, it'll deteriorate the paint and then the steel starts rusting out. The paint's the only thing that stops steel from basically rusting. So if you've got anything in your drainage areas, you're gonna really struggle to keep your boat from being clean in the bilges and therefore um, you know, not rust out over time. So one of the things I consciously do every time I can when I'm doing work on brew peg is always make sure to provide a clean drainage path for any water that's in the bilge so that it can get to the bilge pump so that it can get out, this, out of the boat as fast as possible. Just um, putting a, like a fraction of bend where some of the steel work is, just to make sure that it's well away from it. So you can see the path that it follows. It kind of follows that that beam there, and then juts off through, goes through this hole in that cross member, and then if you're looking directly vertically down, that's your fitting. But you got to look at it on an angle like that because. You sort of see there that's roughly square to the fitting so I have to get this pipe go beyond the fitting and then bend it and come back in order to get it square into that there so it's yeah a bit of tricky a line work I think I have to figure out on that one Alright, so 
So that's that one done. So, last one we've got to do is our rudder, and we may be repositioning that. So let me show you what we're working with. So on our rudder stock, that was the original grease gland, and if I spin around this side, you can sort of see that's where it goes in, just that little fitting middle of the screen there. Let me show you the problem with this. And the top of the rudder post, you got the new bearing, and the new bearing is 86 millimeters from the, oh, from the underside surface here to the very bottom of it. However, that grease nipple sits about 80 millimeters, so this bearing completely covers up the uh, grease nipple. And that was how the, that's the original bearing size and everything. We just duplicated the original bearings. So I don't understand how they were able to grease the original rudder stock in this boat. I know that they did, and I'm assuming the, the bearings maybe just had some slop at the back, like where, like there was a cutout to allow the grease to go in, but to me it seems incredibly ineffective to basically put a big restriction right in front of your grease nipple. So I'm thinking of actually reducing the height by about an inch. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough just to make the difference to, uh, to be able to put the grease straight into the tube between the two bearings rather than um, behind the top bearing. I have kind of two competing ideas as to what was going on with this uh, rudder stock for Brewpeg. So it chewed out bearings. Um, there was two issues that I can sort of see. One is that that grease nipple was behind the top bearing. Um, maybe they had a solution that allowed the grease to pass through, but to me it always seems like you're, you're dealing with a compromise right from the get-go. Um, the, other, the other thing that I pondered is that the rudder stock was actually out of alignment. So to me that makes sense why it was chewing out certain bearings. However, it was a different bearing than I thought it was going to be. You know, you think it's going to chew out um, the bottom bearing and the rudder stock, and it wasn't. It was chewing out the the top bearing, and there was a, there was a bunch of different stuff going on. So I'm not 100% certain what's going on. So there's two things that I want to solve with all of this that I'm doing with the rudder. I want to make sure that the rudder's absolutely bang on aligned this time. It was 50 millimeters out, so from top to bottom there was a like 50 mil or two inches. There's a two inch misalignment, which is huge over the space of. I was probably eight feet, maybe, from the very top of the rudder, rudder post right down to the very bottom of the rudder. Maybe, oh, maybe more than that, maybe 10 feet, something like that. Um, the rudder shaft is about four and a half feet, and then the rudder is probably, oh, it's gotta be easy, five feet long, something like that. Four and a half, five feet, something like that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the issues, is I wanna make sure the alignment's bang on. And then the second is I wanna make sure that whenever I pump grease into these fittings, I know it's going exactly where it needs to go in the right quantities. Which leads me to my third point. Um, there's a reason why I've done three separate lines. So there's a, there's, um, you can, if you want, put a single manifold. So you have one grease nipple that has three lines going off it to the various parts of the boat. Um, I, I don't want to go anywhere near a system like that. The reason being is if one of those lines blocks up for whatever reason, there's no way that I can, I can force grease into that. So say, for example, the rudder blocks up. There's, and if I have that three-way manifold, if I keep forcing grease in, it's just gonna pile it into the stern gland and not go into the rudder. Whereas if I have separate lines, I know that if I'm putting grease into the rudder uh, grease nipple, it's definitely going into there. And if it's tight, I know it's blocked. So it gives me an uh, advanced warning that something's going on. If I have that um, three-way manifold idea, it doesn't work. I've got no idea of telling if there's something wrong with one of those lines. And so I've, I've had a good think about this and I've decided I will relocate it. I, I can't think of any good reason not to set it up with a better flow of grease going through it. So I've got, um, I think it's quarter NTP pipe thread, it's whatever, whatever this one here is. This is the fitting that I'm gonna be using, so it's a little right angle fitting. So my plan, I'm gonna mount it on the front so it's easy to get to going forward. I want everything to be as simple and easy to reach as possible, so I'm gonna mount it on the front. It means it's easy to drill, but it's also easy to, to fit it all in. Um, and I think I'll probably just go down maybe two inches and then I know I'm really well clear of that bearing. Um, and it also allows me to run the pipe work and everything in a really easy to get to obvious place. Bloody stress. This thing's like an inch thick. That's not a complaint by the way, that's like, I'm chuffed with that. I just don't want to have to drill it very often. <laughs> so this is the bit that I'm nervous about doing. This.
Yeah, cool. Alright, that'll do for our test fit. Yellow fluff out of that. Alright, that's our new fitting. start bending it out and get it out into the straight area here. That angle is exactly, they're, they're both meeting each other perfectly. So now I want to duplicate that curve. It's quite a big curve, but I want to duplicate that curve onto this pipe here. And it's going to allow me to throw it over the, over the back wall. I'm basically looking down the length. It's got to be perfectly square. To that end piece of pipe. So I think there. Pretty good. I'm happy with that. I want to duplicate the, the line that this other one's taking. So you can see that line there comes down neatly. It's like an inch clear off that deck line there. Ignore the rust, that will actually get cleaned up. Um, we've got a really big clearance um, bend there. Comes back and then it's sitting close to that pipe, but I'm actually gonna tie those two together with a, um, I don't know what they're called, but those little double clamp things. And then the three of them, I don't actually have the fittings. I've got to nip into town tomorrow and grab some more fittings, but the um, three of them all line up with those ports. So all I've got to do left today is uh, just fasten that down to that main structural member and then they are our three grease lines finished. The grease nipple screwed in, it only just sticks up above that plate and my thought was if it was too tight on that plate that putting a, a grease gun on there is always going to be a bit of a, an issue if you don't get it perfectly square or whatever you're probably going to you know, not quite get it on or it'll hold itself off. Um, by putting these little extensions on it means that it's incredibly easy to make sure that you've got lots of clearance around um, the grease gun. Tightened up all right. <laughs> I'm such a knob. The bloody nut that I was missing earlier is sitting on the pipe. And last but not least, this is our rudder post. So that's the old fitting where it used to go in, which is now behind a bearing, so it doesn't allow grease to pass. So I need to throw this little bung in. So with that, that's our rudder post sealed up pretty much. So that's it. That's our three grease ports plumbed in. So we've got nice solid copper lines, basically one running down to the back of the prop shaft, another heading up and out the back, heading over to the rudder stern post and then we've got where are we our third line heading forward it runs needs to be just plumbed in. she runs all the way down to the essentially the front of the prop shaft and where the uh, just behind where the stern gland sits so the stern gland in this particular setup sits about here um, and it's I don't know it's maybe an inch and a half Actually, it will be an inch and a half because it's three wraps of half inch packing. So next week, we've got a wee bit going on with the rudder. We're hoping to finish it off. We've got our shaft down here that we need to um, finish off all of the bits. What we need to do to finish it off is to get this big stainless flange here welded into the bottom of the shaft. We need to put the rudder on to know where to weld it. This is our yoke. Oh, big stonking great big piece of steel. So this piece of steel here is what the rams bolt to and what goes on top of the rudder shaft. We're going to get that plastered, 
Got a wee bit of stuff to do on that because I need to fit a rudder indicator. And our rudder that's been sitting here for quite a while, I need to excavate it out from under all the parts. But this here is going to be sandblasted shortly. We need to fit the last bearing, so this little um, self-lubricating bearing here gets fitted into the bottom of the rudder just there. And then we're going to be getting a pin made. So we already have a pin but it's not quite what we need. So we're going to be making a pin that has a flange that welds onto the bottom of the keel down here. And at the same time we're going to do our rudder shaft alignment. So that's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to be using a massive piece of pipe to get that organised. So the rudder's progressing pretty well. We'll have that on within the week I'd say. And then we're on to our stabilisers. Um, we've also got the dinghy to get organised still. We're still progressing on that. Um, and then we've got crash bulkhead. So the next sort of two months I suppose is going to be pretty engineering heavy. So if you like that sort of stuff, um, stay with us and stay tuned. Thanks. See you guys. You want to leave this place where we grew up This old town, just put it all behind Remember you and I Would always find somewhere to hide When we were kids so we could see And hear the water run The river's gonna cry when you're gone